GR Toys slash Haolongu started off very well. They were the first to offer a Spinosaurus with the revised Ibrahim tail. The actual paint application was nowhere as good as the paint master photos, but the scalp nonetheless was good, so their debut enjoyed a positive reception. They then offered the almost insanely painted Kakarodontosaurus. This created a big EBA with many collectors. The Dicreosaurus wasn't as complexly painted, but it was still well applied enough to be pleasing for most, as was the Quetzalcoatlus. However, they started to draw down on that EBA with the Terezinosaurus, and then with an egregious effort on T-Rex, both the sculpt and the paint. After that, they seemed to disappear for a while. Last week, out of the blue, I saw Nasuto Ceratops offered, without any build-up of hype and fanfare, and it was cheap, for us anyway. I thought I'd give it a shot and check it out. And once again, two variants are offered, one with a more gaudy frill reminiscent of the PNSO Tsingtaosaurus, and another less flamboyant but with what looked like the more complex paint job for the body. I got them both, and hopefully we can see how GR Toys is doing, and help you decide which you might want to get, if any. I'll share some thoughts at the end of the video, so that you can form your own thoughts as we go through the figures. Before that, a quick word on Nasuto Ceratops. There's been a deluge of new Ceratopsians discovered in recent years. Some were so fragmentary as to be little more than examples of irrational exuberance, while others have been fair dinkum. Nasuto Ceratops, thankfully, belongs to the latter, with remains from three different individuals making up about 80% of the skull. You can see the unusual orientation of the orbital horns here, but the other unusual feature is the bulbous nose, which gives it its name. Nasuto Ceratops means large-nosed horned face, from the Latin Nasutus, meaning large-nosed, and Ceratops, of course, we know. Nasuto Ceratops is estimated to have been 4.5 meters or 14.8 feet. Now, this model is surprisingly small. In fact, look at the small boxes. Niche measures 17 centimeters or 6.7 inches. Yet, even at this small size, that would make it closer to 1 to 26 scale, and obviously too big to be 1 to 35. Yes, Nasuto Ceratops was a little fella. And here's a 1 to 25 humanoid for size. So first, let's look at the flamboyant frill, described as the blue variant in the Chinese listings. Unusually, this highly colourful frill is paired with a body that's the darkest I've ever seen on any of my Ceratopsian models. The very dark grey, with blended black patterns actually looks nice on its own, fading into a slightly lighter grey. I must say it's darker than the release image. But juxtaposed against the multi-colour of the head, it works surprisingly well to bring it out with a greater contrast. Now let's take a closer look at the head. Immediately, the multi-coloured frill is what jumps out, and it's really brilliantly coloured. You can see how it fades down through a spectrum of colours, with some nice stippling within. The periphery, however, has this dark border I find a little jarring. You can see some of the green makes an appearance in the whites of the epoxipitals. And then down here, you see the colour transition into these horns going up here and fading into a kind of off-white. And from the side, the colours in the face are rather pleasing, with faint echoes of the frill. I especially like this streak down the right side here. Just a look at the bottom, seeing the blend from the throat to the mandible. And I like this transverse streak here, creating this vampiric look from the side. 
In terms of anatomical features, you can see that characteristic bulbous nose. Then the signature orbital horns. From the top, they curve forwards a little laterally, then medially again, and finally curving to superior points. However, Haolongku seems to have taken some license and directed them obliquely upwards when viewed from the side. And I wish they'd kept to the more usually depicted horizontal orientation. Now maybe you could consider it intraspecific variation and call it good. But if an animal has only one or two good specimens, I personally prefer for a model to be as close to the paper as possible, and barring any revisions. In addition, if we consider the epoxypitals, we see that the number is way off. The Landertal 2016 paper here clearly shows seven epiparietals and four episcomosals, making a total of 11 epoxypitals per side, or 22 in all. And here in the GR Toys, you have 7 epoxypitals per side, making a total of 14. Now granted, there may be variations among individuals, but this discrepancy is too large for my liking. In addition, since 14 is obviously an even number, it doesn't have that midline epiparietal zero, which makes Nasutoceratops very unusual among centrosaurines, since this is a more chasmosaurine feature. Other than that, the detailing is really nice. You see how the scale reduces down the face? The mandible. And then back here on the posterior frill. And since we're here, Let's head down the postcranial area. You can see the form pretty much follows your typical centrosaurian morphology. And look at the detail down the dorsal with this row of nicely sculpted midline osteoderms. Then down the flank, you can see these very nice skin folds. It goes to show how far we've come when scales like these seem to be a bit large by today's standards, especially against the likes of PNSO. In fact, they appear to be of similar size to this old safari nasutoceratops. But as we proceed down the limbs, we see these scales reduce in size, and that's where we see the kind of fineness in keeping with today's standards. The dark, somber colour fades a little in the ventral. And this blending is so smooth and pleasing. Hands and feet are pleasingly correct, the manus showing the weight-bearing digits medially, and the reduced fourth and fifth laterally. Halonku has chosen to give digits 4 and 5 claws, though these are often omitted in other reconstructions. The important thing to me is that these aren't weight-bearing. Whoa, you can really see the very fine detail in these tiny scales here. And there's this white dry brushing over the digits, which makes it more visually interesting. And these, by the way, are also found in the feet. And here we can also appreciate the very fine scale detail. Now one thing that is very unusual is the humongous musculature in the thigh, and especially the leg. Just look at the size of these gastrocnemias here. If you compare this... and this... and assuming that the entire tricep surae is equally hypertrophied, it suggests an animal capable of charging or pushing forward with frightening bursts of power. Finishing off with the tail, again notice the fineness of the scales as we proceed distally. Incredibly pleasing detail. By the way, notice how very subtly these stripes cross the tail. And then the underside.
and so much for this variant. And now for the orange. We won't need to go through the detail since it's obviously the same sculpt. However, the colour and pattern is clearly of a different aesthetic. Now starting at the head, the scheme consists mainly of oranges and browns, with perhaps a little purplish quality in places. The frill again has that border that I don't quite like. Then there are the mottlings in the frill, which are blended in nicely. The two orange eye spots I feel look a little mundane. The horns are pretty much the same as the other version. And underneath, you see the same interesting transverse stripe on the mandible. The body, however, is where we start to get to that GR Toys complexity of old. Nowhere near the level of the Carcharodontosaurus, it nonetheless captures a complexity that puts it above much of the mass-produced models. The browns are really very nicely transitioned against the beige. And you see infusions of that orange, either subtly into the browns, or more directly as these spots. Now compared to the paint master, it's perhaps a little less nuanced. But as a model itself, very complex compared to others, from Safari for example. And you can see how the colours go on the rest with a quick once over. And finally, let's do a direct comparison between the two versions. So you have the head, the frill, the body, and you can see how each type of paint scheme highlights different aspects of the textures. feet, and the tail. Now, ceratopsians are very well known, so instead of something scientific today, I thought I'd go off on a different tangent and share some thoughts and expectations. Many collectors were concerned about GR Toys slash Haolongku after Terezinosaurus and the tragic T-Rex. So this new release was of its special interest. Where does Nasuto Ceratops put them? To put my own finger in the pie, I'd start by saying that much of what we expect in sculpt and paint can be tied to a few factors, such as size, price, and company reputation. GR Toys started with Spinosaurus, the actual model was nowhere near the release image, but the sculpt still won many fans over. I'd argue that the green at least doesn't look awful. They then followed up with Kakarodontosaurus, and to this day I think it's clear to see that this level of complexity has not been surpassed by many of the usual companies but it's probably a once-in-a-lifetime happenstance, an outlier we don't expect to see again. The Dicreosaurus was of a different aesthetic, still very nice, but more back to earth. Then we had the Quetzalcoatlus, which for what it was, in terms of size and animal, was sufficiently detailed and well painted to pass master. The Terezinosaurus we saw in my review.
And of the T-Rex, well, the less said, the better. Now, what about these Nasutoceratopsis? I think we should leave aside the comparisons to large offerings such as Spinosaurus, Dicreosaurus, and Cacarodontosaurus. Uh, firstly, the larger size provides a larger canvas for paint complexity and variation in sculpting detail. Then for the smaller offerings like Quetzalcoatlus and Terezinosaurus, we could look at the price points. Now, I believe it was $35 US for Quetzalcoatlus, and Terezinosaurus, if I recall correctly, was a ridiculous $60 or $70 plus dollars. The Nasutoceratops for fans in the West would be around $20. Put in perspective, the Wild Safari Nasutoceratops was US $10 when it was selling. And still available, we have the Wild Safari Triceratops for $12.50 and the Wild Safari Regaliceratops for $12.50 as well. Now, both are some of my favorite mass-produced ceratopsians ever, especially this Regaliceratops, which is still one of the best sculpted and painted mass-produced ceratopsians. The PNSO Machaira Ceratops is $23. I should mention that for us in Asia, it's actually 90 yuan or 13 US dollars, so even closer to the wild safari ceratopsians for us. So put in this light, this is where the comparison is fairest. And for the price and the size, I think you can see that these are certainly very comparable. And in terms of detail and fineness of sculpt, as well as complexity of paint application, the GR Toys unfortunately blows away the rest. Our propensity for forgiveness varies inversely with the price we have to pay for a model. In that light, I think there is nothing to forgive, and much to be thankful for in GR Toys' or Haolongu's latest offering. This little pair of Nasutoceratopsis, save for some anatomical disappointments in the head, are a nice pair of smaller, more affordable models to have, and a welcome break from more expensive offerings. I'd only suggest more rigour in scientific research for better accuracy, and I'd certainly be keen to see what GR or Haolongu offers next. I just wish that those of you in the West wouldn't have to pay such shipping fees and middleman charges so you'd pay what's more reflective of the actual prices, but there's no getting around it. We once tried to be clever by helping a friend ship a model from China, and after all the charges are factored in, all the trouble at the post office, we saved him a grand total of $2, and so much too for any cunning scheme to benefit from arbitrage. Alright, for comparison, there really is just one for me, and that's the wild Safari Nasuto Ceratops. Sculpted by Doug Watson and released in 2015, it's slightly smaller, yet it's still one of my favourite ceratopsians from a mass-produced line. You can see in terms of the scaly integument, both start comparatively equally. Indeed, to this day, I'm still delighted by what this sculpt was able to achieve. Towards the feet, however, is where we start to see a disparity in fineness. You can see that in the tail as well, where there's a decidedly more pronounced bumpiness in the safari than the haolongku. But there's one area that safari blows this one away, and that's accuracy to the paper by Lan the top. Now first of all, there's no doubt whatsoever as to the orientation and the angle of these orbital horns. The horizontality here is just as I'd expect and hope. More impressive are the poxipitals, now, as we saw, the representation in the Haolongku seems completely divorced from the material in the paper. Not only does Doug's Nasuto Ceratops have it closer, it has them perfect. We have that unique midline epiparietal EP0, then exactly epiparietals 1 to 7 on each side, followed by episquamosals 1 to 4. No doubts, no buts, a total of 23 epoxipitals. If you only had one Nasuto Ceratops, I think you'd be very happy with this one. Just for some size comparisons, here are some other Ceratopsians you may already have for your reference. We have the Wild Safari Triceratops, the PNSO Triceratops, the 
the PNSO Machiroceratops, and then the PNSO Pachyrhinosaurus. So that's it. Now I'm glad that these little Nasuto Ceratopsis seem to put GR Toys and Haolonku back on track towards respectability. Whoever can be trusted with very little can be trusted with much, in general, and should hopefully bode well for future, larger offerings to come. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you soon with another video.